Hello everyone. In this uh, video, I want to talk about the kinematics of planetary gearboxes that are uh, very common and they are used in your uh, automatic transmissions. So I want to show you how these uh, compact gearboxes can create several speed ratios in uh, a very, as I said, small uh, room space, right? with the help of an outer ring, which is an internal gear, we call it the ring gear, the central gear, we call it the sun gear, this yellow one, and these gears that are between the sun and the ring, which we call them planet gears. Okay, and also these planet gears, their centers are all attached to what we call the planet arm, so this um, member with these three arms, right, this is called the planet arm or spider, and uh, as you, you can see, these uh, planet arms, you typically do not control them. So basically, you do not uh, attach your input to these uh, planet gears, and you don't take your output from them. You typically provide your input either to the sun gear or to the ring gear, or you might give your input to the arm gear and uh, your outputs also from these. So uh, the ones that are used as input and output are ring, sun, and planet arm, not the planet gears. So here I want to show you the kinematics. So here I use three points. All of them are on the planet gear, right? The contact points between planet and sun, planet and ring, and the center of the planet. So point A, since it is on the ring gear as well, I can say, and the ring gear is rotating about the center, the velocity of A, V equals R omega, because it's pure rotation, and R here is R of the ring, right, because again, point A does belong to the ring as well, so velocity of A is omega of the ring times R of the ring, point C, which is uh, the point on the sun gear and here on also the planet gear since it belongs to the sun i can say v of point c equals omega of the sun times r of the sun and the center of the uh, planet gear b that's this point here it does also belong to what to the arm so i can say v of that center right this point here the V of the center is what? Is equal to this radius, which we call it radius of the arm, times omega of what? Times omega of the arm. So you get this formula here. Now also, also, velocity of the center B can be related to the two endpoints A and C as V of B is the average of those two. You might say, where did you get that from? Well, from kinematics, you can uh, write that velocity of point B is velocity of A plus omega of the planet here, cross R of B with respect to A, because A and B belong to the same rigid body. You can write a similar relation between B and C, as again B and C belong to the same planet gear. So V of B is V of C plus omega planet cross R of B with respect to C, and R of B with respect to A and B with respect to C are opposite of each other. They are negative of each other, right? So one of them is from A to B. So one of them is like this vector. And the other one is from C to B. So one of them is like this vector. And these two vectors are clearly equal and opposite of each other. If you put them here and add the two equations together, you clearly see that 2VB is going to be equal to VA plus VC, and if you divide by 2, you get this relation, that V of B equals the average of those two velocity points. Now, one other thing I want to do is, I want to see how much is R of the ring, and how much is R of the arm. So if you look here, the radius of the ring, this distance, is radius of the uh, sun plus diameter, or 2 times radius of the planet this much right so that's what you have over here and the radius of the arm this distance is clearly what radius of the Sun plus radius of the planet which is this formula here now if I plug that radius of the arm and radius of the ring 
in uh, here and here from those two formulas and for velocity and then the result of them I plug them as velocity of a and c into this numerator and for velocity of b I use this formula so if I plug all of these and combine I get down to this very important equation equation number one this is your ultimate equation for what for kinematics of a planetary gear set this relates the omega of the arm, omega of the ring, and omega of the sun with also what? With the radius of the sun and the planet. So if you know the radius of the sun and the radius of the planet here, then you can relate these three omegas together. Now, clearly you can see that there are three omegas in one equation. So if I want to get one of them, if I want to calculate one of these omegas as the output, then I need to have the two other omegas, right? Because it's like one equation with three unknowns. So if I say one of the unknowns is the output, let's say this omega of the arm, I don't know. Then in order to calculate for that, I need to have both omega ring and omega watt sun. So this is a system with what? With two outputs as you can see here i can add it for you that here you have basically what you have two inputs and one what output this is what this equation is all about so this system has two degrees of freedom so you need to provide two inputs to get one output and again everything is determined based on this equation one so here, as an example, let's say one of these gears, let's say the sun gear, you hold it stationary. Okay, so omega of the sun equals zero, this guy. If this is zero, right, this term is zero, then the result is two omega arm times radius sun plus radius what? Plus radius planet equals omega of the ring times radius sun plus two radius planet. Now, let's say from these two arm and ring you choose ring to be the other input a specific number not zero like this a non-zero number and the output is uh, being taken away from the arm so your speed ratio is omega of the arm over omega of the ring and from that formula, you can easily find omega of the arm as a function of what? Omega of the ring, which is going to be based on the ratio of these radii, as you can see over here. So here is the speed ratio of the system if one of my inputs, which is the sun, is zero. The other one, which is the ring, I can change as much as I want in any way I want. It's an arbitrary input. Now my one output, arm, right? If I divide this omega by the omega of the in, but non-zero omega of the ring, I get the speed ratio, and that the speed ratio is, as you can see, is a function of the radius of the sun and the radius of what? The planet. And if you look at this clearly, you can see that the numerator is smaller than denominator. Because in numerator, you have one radius sun and two planets. In denominator, you have two suns and two planets. So this guy is clearly what? Less than 1. What does it mean? When omega output is less than omega input or the ratio is less than 1, means you are reducing the RPM. So this combination is a what? Is a reducer of the RPM, right? It brings down the RPM. Another thing that is important is since the sun gear and the planet gears are meshed together, right? You see here, they are meshed together. Also, the planet gear and the ring gear, they are meshed together. You know, anytime gears are meshed, their gear modulus should be the same. The modulus of the sun should be the same as planet because they are meshed. And the planet should be the same as ring because they are meshed. And the modulus of a gear is the ratio of the radius of the pit circle divided by the number of teeth. Therefore, for all of these gears, this equality of these ratios exists. That R of the sun over N of the sun is the same as the same ratio for planet and the same ratio for the ring gear. Therefore, not only I can write this speed ratio in terms of the radii, 
I can also what? Divide everything in the numerator and denominator of that by, let's say, a fixed radius planet. And then this guy is going to be like 2. This guy is going to be like 2. But here you're going to have R of the sun over all of the planet. And here is R of the sun over R of the uh, planet. And those are the same as the ratio of the teeth. Therefore, I can write this same formula in terms of the number of teeth, as you can see here. So I can write it in terms of n of the sun and n of the planet. Okay? So most of the time, you know the number of teeth on the gears instead of, you know, the what? The radius of the pit circle. So this is another way to write that speed ratio. Now, you might say, well, here, good, that's one speed ratio, and that's one less than one, so it is going to reduce the RPM, fine. Is that it? No. Remember here, I held the sun fix and changed the ring gear and got the output from the arm. But I can change this uh, combination. Next time, I can say, well, I want to fix the ring. I want to hold the ring omega as zero pass the non-zero input to the sun gear, again, take my output from the arm. So you see, my, you see my output did not change. It's still the arm gear, the uh, gear arm, I'm sorry. But what? Instead of holding the sun fix and moving the ring, this time I'm holding the ring fix and moving the sun gear. I'm just changing the inputs. This time, if you plug those same numbers here and uh, this term, omega of the ring times that uh, parentheses term is going to be zero. Therefore, only this guy is going to be equal to the left-hand side. And from here, again, you can find what? A different speed ratio this time, which is going to be like that. And again, this is less than one. But as you look, this previous speed ratio is different from this one. If you look, this previous one was bigger than this current one because previous one, you had this term in numerator, now you don't. So this is an even smaller speed ratio compared to last time, right? For example, if this one like 0.8, this one might be like 0.4 or 0.5 or something like that. So uh, if this is like, for example, your second gear, this is like your first gear. You have more reduction in the RPM. Okay, so, so far, these two scenarios, uh, we had the arm to be the output, and then we switched between sun and ring for the inputs. Now we can change the order. We can say what? Now I want the ring to be the output. Look at these two scenarios. And then I switch between what? Between arm and the sun. In one case, arm is zero. Sun is non-zero. In the other one, sun is hold constant, fix, and the arm can change. And if I calculate the speed ratio for these two, using, again, this formula number one, I get different speed ratios. One of them will have a negative sign, and negative means now the output is going to rotate in the opposite direction of the input, which means it's a reverse gear. And the magnitude of it, as you can see, is less than 1. So it's going to reduce the RPM and reverse it. And if you look at this case here, this is positive, so it's not going to reverse it. But the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so it's going to increase the RPM. So it's like a fifth gear, okay? And finally, we can put the sun to be the output, as you can see. One time, you fix the ring. You allow arm to change. One time you fix the arm, you allow ring to change. And again, you get two different speed ratios for this scenario, where one of them is, again, the speed ratio is bigger than one. But as you can see, it's different from this case, right? Look at these two. The numerators are the same, but here the denominator is smaller than this case. So this is a bigger speed ratio compared to that one. So if this is like... 1.2, this is like 1.6. So, for example, you might call this like a fourth gear. You might call this like a fifth gear, right? And the last one, the speed ratio is bigger than one in magnitude, but it's negative. So, not only the uh, RPM is going to go up, it's going to also reverse it. And we typically don't have a scenario like this because in most of the cars, when you reverse, the RPM is less than 
one less the race speed ratio is less than one so this is something that you typically don't see in a car and we might not have such a thing but you see that i have three omegas that i can basically pass two of them as the inputs and one as the output and so i can change which one is input which one is output therefore in general i can get six different watt rpms as you can see where some of them are reducing RPM, some of them increasing RPM, some of them are reducing or increasing, but at the same time, they are reversing it. And that comes from this negative watt sign. So six different speed ratios can come from a single watt, a single planetary gear. So the major take home message here is the major formula, the major formula that you can calculate all of these speed ratios from is this equation one this equation in the red box and from there you can calculate what all of these equations so this is your important equation which i drived and i showed you how to use it so hopefully this video was useful to you and i'm going to see you in my next lecture thank you